Today, we're taking a ride through Electric Oslo with David Hoffman, an automotive expert who's head of strategy in the mobility vertical at Shipstead Nordic Marketplaces. Today, he's taking me to a popular Oslo landmark called Holmenkollen, the famous ski jump that overlooks Oslo Fjord. And along the way, we'll have conversations about the future of mobility. So buckle up and join the ride. This is gonna be so fun. Hello, David. Hello, Jordan. How are we doing? Very good, thank you. And you? Well, thank you. Beautiful, yeah. sunny day here in Oslo. Really good day, yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Which automotive players do you think are creating the future of mobility? That's a really good question. If I have the answer, I would probably uh, be a, a very rich man. We can probably see that there might be different segments um, of players that might take a leading role. Mm -hmm. One obvious one is Tesla um, that has already done a fantastic job in leading the electrification around the globe. But of course there's many like new kids uh, around the block mm -hmm. that try to play a role and, and try to build uh, accessibility to mobility and um, try to be the most transparent one along that way. So I think there's also room for some of these connecting players in the ecosystem that play an important role. We've just launched uh, in Shipset Nordic Marketplaces a car subscription marketplace. Um, that is certainly one way to uh, help consumers to get access uh, and to be perhaps a bit more brand agnostic. Right. Um, while at the same time the OEMs and some more dedicated players will try to only position their single brand um, and make that probably more important than uh, the business model behind, right? So it's a little bit of a chicken and egg question almost, uh, who will win it. Amazing, you mentioned electrification, which is super relevant here in Norway, right? Yeah. What would you say makes Norway such an interesting country in terms of mobility in general? I think Norway um, has done a fantastic job when it comes to um, building up a more sustainable fleet. So around 80% uh, of new car sales last year were EVs. The second thing around innovation is certainly also around the high digital affinity for Norwegian consumers. Mm. Uh, because things like a bank ID, um, mm. things that build trust and transparency along online sales processes, they really work in Norway. What do you think is the next trend, for a lack of a better word, in mobility? We will try to bring this sort of accessibility to mobility much closer to the end consumer mm. uh, with concepts like subscription and car sharing that are really more on a need base than on a permanent base. Mm. The overall trend obviously is that ownership will reduce given more flexibility of alternative models. There are good reports indicating that subscription might actually become the fourth sort of stable element next to leasing and financing vehicles. You can however argue that leasing and subscription might actually become one at some point because in a way subscription is a form of a more flexible leasing. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, yeah, more flexible forms of offerings will dominate going forward. One of the largest challenges of car subscription is getting consumers to understand yeah. what it actually is. Yeah. When you ask a consumer if they know about car subscription, what percentage of them say, no, I've never heard of it? If you just ask for it unstated, so to say, then it's around five to 10% of consumers that can actually relate to the concept. At really? The moment. Yeah. Which so. is kind of shocking to me, considering I feel like my generation, for example, subscribes to everything in their life. So the, the premise of subscription is rather relatable for a lot of people. I think it's be because you're not really aware of the total cost of ownership of a car today. If you're thinking about insurance and after sales and all these things, which mm -hmm. in a subscription offering, usually uh, looking at the ones that are transparent enough, is clustered very well. It's very transparent and you know what you pay for. It's a very worryless. Um, product. Netflix for cars, right? What do you think it will take in order to grow the car subscription segment? You will probably need sort of three elements. One is around finance, one will be around tech, and the third one will be distribution or access to end consumers. Mm -hmm. 
the, these three elements are the perfect source to make car subscription a growing business. Yeah. What are some of the obstacles that car subscription players are going to have to overcome when they enter the market? Um, I think the topic of how do I actually finance a subscription fleet is something new, perhaps for dealers, perhaps for some fleet owners, but especially also for OEMs that in general will move into a new role by being the owner of the asset and the inventory that they haven't done before, right. which I think has an impact on leasing and subscription. For those cars that they will have constantly on their books, they also will have to find the right way to finance this going forward at scale, right? The OEMs will, I think, play the most dominant role going forward. And there will be some consolidation in the market as it always is with new markets that they might pave the way and especially help on the consumer front to run the education and make everyone understand. All right, Jordan. Should we check out the view? Yeah, let's do it. Wow. What a view. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thanks for taking me on a ride. That was fun. Anytime welcome, Jordan. Thank you. Let's go. I'm freezing. Yeah, likewise. <laughs>